Well, we've had a pretty exciting week this week. There was lots of volatility in the stock market, and we had a lot of economic news and more to come out this morning. Um, the housing market was particularly strong, which was surprise. Uh, it wasn't surprise it was stronger than it has been. It was surprised how strong it was. With I think it was up twenty seven percent, no, fifteen point six percent in new home sales. Uh, that's a that's a tremendous jump. Um, I know from personal experience and some anecdotal information that housing in California is pretty darn strong right now simply because there's not very much inventory. And there's not much inventory, as I mentioned previously, because California changed the rules of January 1st and has slowed down the foreclosure process. And that's given us an artificial housing bump right now. And I'm saying artificial is not going to last. I'm not saying housing is going to collapse. It's just not going to be this accelerated. Um, we had a little bit of bad news out this morning and some good news out this morning. The bad news was personal income fell very strongly by 3 point, I think it was 3.6%, uh, 3.6%, 3 while spending went up two tenths of a percent. Well, that doesn't seem logical because if you have less income coming in, you're spending more. Now, obviously, you're borrowing. That's the only way you can do it. And that's distressing. We don't want to get back into re-leveraging ourselves. We're trying to deleverage. It's important that we do so. So housing was very good. Unemployment claims fell sharply this week. That was very good. But, you know, the economy is just, it's not right. It's not functioning. Um, the reason why it's not functioning because interest rates are too low. The Federal Reserve has been too long involved in our market. And so we don't have a, a normal economic recovery. Um, they're pushing as hard as they can to try to get the economy going. And you, I don't blame them for the push. They need to do it. But at some point, they need to exit. They need to exit the influence they're having on the economy because the economy has to stand on its own two feet. And that is what worried me. That exit point is what's worried me. I'm not saying now, but maybe by the end of the year, be next year sometime. Some point, that exit, the hint of that exit, we already saw that last week, and that started this correction I thought we were going to have. And I'm still not convinced we're not going to have a correction. I think we are. Um, and I'm, I'm just a bit nervous about our economy. Um, I think it's going to get a little bit better this year. But I'm not as optimistic as a lot of other people are. Uh, I don't try to be over-pessimistic either. But I do think the market's going to have a good year this year. I don't know about next year. I don't know. And we're going to have a correction. So maybe it's time to start to lighten it up a little bit on our holdings and just produce a little cash so we can buy back in when the correction's over. The Invest Talk Update is a monthly briefing that gives you a snapshot of the past month's market, along with other useful perspective and information. You'll see important articles like protecting your investments against scam artists excerpts from Steve's book, links to the month's Invest Talk talking points, plus news of upcoming Invest Talk events in your area. And it comes free each month to your email box. To get your subscription, just go to investtalk.com and click on the icon at the top of the page.